It's your boy Thomas back again with another rendition of Truth Be Told. <clears throat> now this week, of course, the big thing on the news was Trump getting shot. Uh, the media tried to put out that the guy who did it, the shooter, was a Republican. But the father came out and said... No, he switched to Democrat. So he was a demon rat. Um, it just... It was crazy. All the comments... You know, from women... Liberal... Woke... Feminist... All like... I can't... Or even the black liberal... Feminist... We're all like, I can't believe he missed, blah, blah, blah. Just crazy. It was ridiculous. I can't believe. There's some sick motherfuckers, some people. They're losing their mind. The left. Just ridiculous. But anyways, that's the big news. There's so many people covering it. I, you, if you watch the channel... You know I hate politics. I just can't stand politics. You got bad people on both sides. There shouldn't even be a demon rat party. If, regarding, I don't even think there should be a Republican party. Honestly, I don't think there should be parties, period. And it's not a democracy. It's, we are a republic. It literally says that. But, whatever. Anyways... Let's get on to what I really want to talk to you about. So the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is I, I've been done with this game for a while now. It's perhaps one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, like, I won't play it for a year or two and then I'll bust it out. And I'll play it again for hours and hours. I love this game. Uh, it's called Gladius. And it's a damn shame that they didn't follow up with the sequel on this or do more of them. Because it's one of the best RPG uh, tactical games there is. And I'm not a huge fan of tactical strategy games. <clears throat> They're okay, but most of them I don't really care for all that much. Some of them I do. This one, hands down, is the best, one of the best games of all time. All time. Uh, it nearly got a perfect score of 10 from everybody who's played it and all the game companies. Like, it nearly got a perfect score. It was like 9.8 was the score. It was nearly a perfect score. Everybody loved this game. I don't know why they didn't do a sequel. It just doesn't make any sense. Anyways, you have two main characters. You have uh, the easy version, which is you play a character named Ursula. Uh, female, and then you have uh, the normal version or you know, regular uh, difficulty. Uh, you play a, a guy named Valance. Uh, now, you have there's a world where there's four sections of the world, there's four sections, different parts of this continent. 
it's split into four. So you're only doing one continent. That's why I said I don't understand why they didn't do a sequel and include more continents. But anyways, there's only four zones or areas. You have Nordok, which is the Barbarian area. And that's where you start off with Ursula. Um, then you have Imperia, which you start off with Valens in it. And it's more like a Roman looking area. They all dress like Romans. Whereas the Barbarians all dress like Barbarians. And then you have... Uh, I think it's called the Expanse. If I remember right. I'm trying to think of the top of my head. Um, it's in the desert. I mean, There's only a couple of like towns in there. Which I don't understand why they didn't have like a character for each uh, area that you start off with. Like a main character for every zone. But they didn't do it. They only did the two. Um... And then you had a place called the Steps, which is like high on a cliff. Like they're cliff dwellers. Um, and they don't have a lot of trees or anything. It's more open fields, kind of like the Expanse, the desert. And they only have a few towns. They have a few more than the, the Expanse. But they mainly only have like four or five towns. The Expanse only has like... I think it's... There's two at first and then there's a third one. That you have to go through the story to get to pop up. Uh, and then Nordok and Imperia. They both have several towns. Um, each town has their own gladiator arena. Uh, each area has their own unique weapons. Uh, the One of the things I didn't care for about the game is uh, you can only get certain weapons at certain times in the game. And sometimes, depending on whether you're playing as Valens or you're playing as Ursula, uh, you're not able to get certain weapons for s some of your gladiators that they they should have like you can like you could get certain weapons at this level for if, if you're playing as Ursula's group you, you can get certain weapons for different gladiators uh, and, and when you start out with her versus you know with Valens you only get certain weapons for his group and then, if you, when you cross over, because eventually you go in the other territories or other zones and fight in the arenas, you, you can get those particular weapons for that group with Valens, but then you can't with Ursula and vice versa. Same thing. You know, Ursula can get, her gladiators can get certain weapons that they can use. Uh, but not in this area, you know, in the game. Whereas you can with the other ones. It's it's kind of screwed up. And there's only particular weapons that you can get when you're way into the game. Like you, uh, you do all four zones, and then you gotta go back and do uh, a couple other zones. Uh, same zones, just at higher levels. And you can only get those particular weapons once you reach that higher level. Um, you don't even have to go level up your character all the way. You only have to go so far and you can end the game. Like you can do the final battles. And that kind of stuff. You can't fight in the grand arena until you're like well into the story towards the very end. That's the only time you really can fight in the Grand Arena. The big one in Imperia. Um, 
You have certain side missions that you can do. And if you do them though, understand that if you pick certain gladiators and you, you like them gladiators, uh, I suggest you save your game before you go doing these side missions. They're at, out in the field, off the road, out of the city. Not in, You're not fighting the gladiator arena. You're fighting in the wilderness uh, because they can die if they're in the wilderness. You can lose gladiators uh, you know, outside the arena. You can't in the arena. The arena, you... It doesn't matter if they fall or not in the arena. You always have them still in your school. But you won't if if you get them killed outside of the arenas. They're dead. They're gone. You can't get them back. Um, unless you did a save. Like I said, there's certain side... Most of the side missions I really didn't care for. There's one side mission that allows you to recruit one undead warrior... Uh, there's only one undead uh, summoner or mage that you can get. Uh, there's only like one or two minotaurs that you can get uh, for gladiators. Okay, there's certain gladiators you can only get like one or two of. The same thing with the yetis. There's like one or two yetis you can get and that's it. Uh, you you basically have a three tier system. You have heavy, mediums, and light gladi light gladiators. Uh, honestly, my favorite was the bandits. The bandit gladiator. I mean, those guys can do rings around the other gladiators. They're really weak at first, but once you get them built up to a certain level, dude, they're like. They're badass. They got an ability called backstab where they could just nearly drop in an opponent that has way much more health and crap than you do. Uh, just certain skill. They have certain a certain skill set that's really good. Every, every gladiator has certain skill sets that other gladiators don't have. Some of them are, are, will be similar and then others won't be. In your main heroes, they each have one particular skill that most generally nobody else has. Um, it's a real shame you can't start off with archers and shit because they have some really cool skills. But by the time you get to them, like they've already got most of their skill set. And it's just, uh, that sucks. Because I'd like to build them up, not already have, like, almost all my skill set. And that's that's one of the problems I had with the game. As a lot of time, you can't get, you can, can't recruit certain gladiators. And they, have, that don't already have their skill sets set. Like, they, you have to. You have to take the skills that the game gives you for that gladiator instead of just building up and choosing your own skill set. I didn't kind of like I, some of that. I didn't like. Like I said, I'd rather start at level one and then work, choose my own skills for each gladiator. I, there's certain gladiator gladiators you can do that with, but. Uh, all in all, the game is its just freaking awesome. I love the, the way they did things in the fighting arena. And I like... <coughs> there's some people that don't like turn-based strategy games. I do. I like turn-based strategy games. I'm not... I'm okay with RTS, which is real-time strategy. But I prefer turn-based. I like turn-based strategy games. But if you like an RPG, you like Gladiator, you know, you have like side quest, you know, story mode, and uh, building up characters and different kinds of characters. Like, there's a ton of Gladiators to 
choose from. Um, I think there's like 30 of them or something. 30 different types of gladiators. So it's really cool. Check out this game. I'm telling you. One of the best games of all time. You will not be disappointed. Two thumbs up. I wish they had made a sequel. But they didn't. Sucks. Check it out. It's for the PS2. By the way. Um. Let's get on to another one, another thing I want to talk to you about. So, we are now on Season 7 of Alone. I mean, on this video. Right now, I, I just started Season 10, so I'm binge-watching all the alone, that Alone series. Season 7 is the Million Dollar Challenge. Someone's got to stay for a hundred days and then they get a million dollars instead of the 500 thousand 500 grand and I told you in the last video this is the point where someone actually gets smart and builds their shelter out of rocks of course he won his name was Roland and he built his shelter out of rocks and he won. He was warm as fuck the entire time, even though the temperatures dropped well below zero. Um, but what's the number one thing about this show? Is it Urbanist Botanist show? Is it a game hunter show? Is it a fishing show? Is it actually a survival show? No, it is a starvation show. That's the name of the game. Let's see who can outlast everybody else by starving themselves. Because that's the number one thing that they can't ever find is fucking food. They all bitch about food. Now, in this season, Roland... He downed a, it wasn't a moose, I think it was some kind of oxen or some shit like that. So he got big game, and it lasted him a long time. He was still fishing. See, that's, most of them, they'll get some fish, and then they'll stop. They'll stop fishing or hunting or whatever for a while, and then they're like, oh, I'm hungry, I... I need to go find more food. No, Roland, Roland killed this big game. It took him a while to get all the meat. Worried about bears stealing his meat. He built a box, you know, like a fridge unit to put store all the meat in, which was smart so animals can't get to it. And then, you know, he kept fishing while he was eating that oxen, you know, he smoked it all and was eating on it while he was getting fish, too. Because he needed the fatty acids from the fish. Uh, the oxen or whatever didn't have all the fat he needed. Uh, it just gave him protein, mainly. But anyways, uh, so through the whole show, I mean, Guess where we are? They call it the Arctic, but it's not the Arctic. Again, I understand this show is produced probably from Canada. It's a Canadian show. But mo fuck, for fuck's sake, get the fuck out of Canada. Seriously. People are sick of watching. I know I am. I'm tired of watching Canada. I hate... They're making me hate fucking Canada. I, I just terrible country apparently up in the north been there in northern Canada again uh, Rowan wins uh, but there's one thing about the show that really drives me nuts and I've mentioned it a hundred times so the women on this show every time they bring women on this show they're pretty much all feminist it's just you know oh I'm doing this for women empower women and you know 
uh, I want to be the first woman to win the show and, you know, show women that they can do anything a man can do and blah, 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 which is all BS. It's all been debunked a hundred times. There was one woman on this season that drove me up the wall. She was one of the last contestants. Uh, you know, she basically has a man who bows down to her stupidity. And it's just ridiculous. She, like, she, you tell she was the one who wore the pants, you know, in that relationship, you know. And he was a, you know, femboy or whatever. But regardless, it, dr it drives me nuts, all that crap. Because it's nonsense. You know, it's literally been debunked a hundred times. Uh, most evil cult in the wor or world history biggest con um but anyways there have been only two women on the entire series that I didn't have a problem with like they didn't bother me really that much because they weren't spewing all that feminist nonsense every other single woman that's been on this series has spewed that feminism nonsense uh, that evil cult. Um, so, there's one in the next season that didn't bother me. Or was she on season 9? No, I think she was on season 8. There's one on season 8 that didn't bother me all that much. And there's one in this season that didn't bother me. There was a woman named Callie. Uh, she... She was right behind Roland. In fact, I think she would have won. <coughs> she might have won if Roland wasn't on the show. Roland was just, you know, he was meant for to do that shit. Uh, but so was she, kind of. She actually knew her shit. She was, she lived that lifestyle. Like, she lives in the outdoors. Yeah, now it's warmer places. But she don't live in a house and all that shit. She literally lives in the woods. Um, from my understanding. So she hunts, uh, you know, fishes, uh, herbalists, you know, all that shit. She does all that shit. She lives out in the woods. Uh, but like I said, it's a warmer climate. She'd never done anything like this, she said. As far as like, you know, freezing temperatures. and She's never tried to live somewhere like that before. It's always been someplace warm. So, she wasn't going to give up until she got frostbite. She ended up getting frostbite. Uh, she couldn't keep... A couple of toes warm enough so they had to extract her because of that uh, I think she she could have won if if it Roland wasn't you know there as well Roland Roland knew his shit too really good and he he liked living that type of lifestyle and it was smart of him to build his shelter out of rocks because those rocks absorbed that heat Everybody else, every season, none of them build their shelter out of rocks. They always use wood. And they do this thing called chit where they fucking put, you know, crack in between the cracks and whatever and think that's going to keep them warm. But it usually doesn't. Because um, the temperatures get too damn cold. Up there in north, northern Canada. But I kind of half-ass liked this season. It was actually pretty decent. Just to watch Roland do his shit. Uh, he was pretty cool. And like I said, Callie is one of the only... There's two women. Callie's one of them that I actually didn't, didn't mind. She wasn't spewing... All this feminism nonsense. She just 
you know, she loved the fucking outdoors. She loved living that lifestyle. More power to her. She seemed all right to me. Didn't bother me a bit. Um, okay. So season seven, it was okay. It wasn't bad. Check it out. Let's move on to your B-movie reviews. Okay, Movieholics, this week is Fantasy Week. Now, I've known about these movies for a while. I've just never bothered watching them. They just re looked really, really cheesy. But, I went ahead and decided to watch the trilogy called In the Name of the King, A Dungeon Siege Tale. Uh, a Dungeon Siege Tale, sorry. That first one was done in 2007 and made about 13 million worldwide. Didn't do all that well. Uh, it starred Jason Statham and Claire uh, Ferlani, which played his wife. Now, I'd never heard of a dungeon siege, whatever it is. Never heard of it. Some type of video game or some shit. Um, the act... You had some pretty decent actors in this show. You had Ron Perlman. Um, you know, Ray Loretta. You know, there's a few good actors in this movie. However, the story was just really lame. The story sucked. You had this evil magician. There's only a few of them left. And he's trying to take out this kingdom. And take it over and become king. And he has this little army he controls. They're called Groks or something like that. Their version of fucking, I guess, orcs. Which was kind of lame. Um, the fighting was, eh, it was okay, but it wasn't, it just seemed forced, like it was almost silly looking to watch him fight, in some of the fight scenes, um, you know, when they're, I'm not talking about like one-on-one -on -one fights, I'm talking about, you know, the two armies fighting or whatever, Burt Reynolds played the king? Like, really? <laughs> okay, whatever. But of course, you had the same old story. You know, Jason Statham, uh, he was adopted supposedly when he was a kid in this village. Come to find out, he was actually the, 
the son, uh, the son of the king, Burnt Reynolds, uh, which Burnt Reynolds figured he was dead or whatever. And he's just now finding out his son's still alive. And of course, he's going to take over the kingdom, become king. I don't know. Uh, this evil wizard, played by Ray Loretta, Loretta, he comes in and he kills Jason Statham's son and kidnaps his wife, so Jason Statham's got to go get him back. He gets a little help along the way. Um, he, of course, with the help of his wife and a couple others, they end up killing Ray Loretta. I don't know why I can't say his last name very well. But anyways, they kill him. And all ends well. They ends well. He becomes king. Blah, blah, blah. That's the end of the movie. It was okay, but it was kind of lame. I give it a thumbs up and a thumbs, thumbs down. Like I said, it was, it was okay. For a one-time watch. It wasn't really all that great, though. And then the the sequel, In the Name of the King 2, stars Dolph Lundgren. And I think it's Natasha uh, Moth. It was in 2011. It went straight to video, so there's no box office numbers. Same guy directs this one that directed the first one. This is where it got silly. Uh, now in this story, <laughs> you have some time traveling going on. Dolph Lundgren is from present day, and you have a sorcerer that comes through, or sorceress that comes through and plucks him from the future, brings him to the past. He's actually the son of the king, the late king. Uh, they, uh, the source, the sorcerer before her took him to the future and dropped him off in the future at a, uh, 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 like an all boys home or orphanage or whatever. To hide him from the present king which is an alchemist who likes creating plagues or some shit and wiping out, you know, villages or whatever. He's trying to get to the future so he can wipe out people in the future from, for some odd reason. I don't get it. There's some type of prophecy that says he's supposed to do it or some shit like that. It is really weird and confusing. Um... And Dolph Lundgren, he's just, I don't know, he really wasn't asking the correct questions. It was just kind of odd. Like he just went along with everything. Like, okay, I'll just go along with it. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to figure out what the hell is all really going on. But anyways, he's supposed to kill some woman who has been fighting to restore the original kingdom from this new evil king. And the guy, the actor who plays the king, uh, he's a decent actor, but he just, dude, he just was, didn't come off as a king to me at all. Just the wrong part for him. But anyways, uh, Dolph Lundgren eventually, you know, he kills him and blah, blah, blah. But the way he kills him is he ends up getting thrown back into the future with the king. And he ends up killing him in his house. And that's the end of the movie. Uh, it was really cheesy. This one was really bad cheesy. There's a dragon in it and everything else too. And he wants to leave his kingdom. Dolph Lundgren, like I said, he, he tells this woman, you know, that which he met for five minutes, that she's the new king or queen of the, his kingdom. That's it. You know, it's just 
I'll, some feminism was in this movie. Just a tad. But anyway, it's just nuts. Um, it's okay for a one-time watch. But I found it really cheesy. And Dolph Lundgren moved around like he was older than shit. Like a really old man. I didn't think it was all that great, but it's, you could watch it. I give it thumbs up, thumbs down. I mean, it's watchable, but it really wasn't very good. Um, there is a third one, which I will get to the next time I do Fantasy Week. Uh, we'll do that next time. If you have any thoughts about what I talked about earlier in the video, please leave your thoughts down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you can think of any underrated or B-rated flicks that I may never, any genre, for the most part, unless it's just pure drama or westerns or musicals, I don't watch those. But for the most part, most genres, B-rated shit, underrated shit that you think I've never even heard of or seen, please leave your suggestions down in the comment section down below and I'll get to reviewing them as soon as I can. So until next time, I told you to be told the truth and you just been told.